Thanks very much, Karen and Tom Pierre and uh, Pembina for organizing this. It's a pleasure to be involved. Uh, I've talked to many of the people I see that are on the call uh, previously, so some of you may know some of this information, but I've just got a couple of slides here to go through quickly before we get into the exciting stuff that Chris Higgins is going to present. So uh, I'm out here in, in Ottawa, Ontario with uh, the Housing Division in Natural Resources Canada's Office of Energy Efficiency, and this is where the Energide Rating System uh, sits. Um, however, my base position, I'm here on secondment, I've been here for two and a half years, but my base position is in Victoria, British Columbia with our energy efficiency branch out there in the Ministry of Energy Mines. So um, I'm really interested and excited and deeply connected to what's going on in Vancouver and around the province and I think we can be proud that BC is, um, it may feel like a lot of work still ahead on the, in the labeling uh, department and other areas related to housing but uh, BC is definitely uh, at the forefront of what's going on nationally and so I'm very proud and excited about everything that's happening. So we'll hear more from uh, Chris uh, Kagan's about the, the reality, the dirty work of what happens on the ground to make it all happen. But So um, basically what's happening at Enercan is we've undergone a, an overhaul of the Energuide rating system. Many of you are aware that everything from the label to the homeowner reports that are, that are provided to people to the software, to all the procedures, uh, the standard that describes exactly how the rating system is implemented, have all uh, via a very large consultation process, national process, been updated and implemented and now we are really getting much closer to the verge of uh, working with provinces and territories to transition. So what this means is, you know, Enercan has a lot of work to do in terms of the transition, but the actual switchover in any given province or territory is going to depend on all the partners and the work that's going on there. So it's, it, we're going to get to the phase pretty soon where we'll work really closely with the province and the utilities and certainly the city of Vancouver and Metrovan on the actual timing. So Enercan does not prescribe the timing of the switch. That's what I want to make really clear is that uh, we're, we're working really hard to just collaborate to the max here. Uh, to make sure that um, we get the system ready and there have been delays and everybody's been very patient uh, with the housing division and Natural Resources Canada but we are now field trialing the system and we feel like we'll be ready this year uh, hence the name version 15. There, there's not a previous versioning of the Interguide rating system as such but we're calling it version 15 for 2015 and the actual launch of the system. So I'm going to try now remotely to, uh, to switch through the slides here and we'll see how I do. I think there's a bit of a delay at my end. Um, we should be on the second slide. Now this is um, just to give you a, a look at the new scale. Again, many have seen it. So there's been a switch to gigajoules per year. Currently the rating system uses 0 to 100. This consumption-based scale uh, was a big deal and, and really uh, recommended heavily to Enercan. Go away from the kind of mysterious 0 to 100 scale. Um, now this switch will, will cause some interesting challenges, but the transition, you know, we're working on communications uh, planning with our partners and certainly with the City of Vancouver we'll have to work closely the people who deliver the rating system have had uh, a lot of preliminary uh, and advanced notice about this and we're hoping that energy advisors and service organizations will really uh, have a pretty good idea but certainly utilities and municipalities and partners like Pemina we really hope to work with you on get, getting the messaging right because we re we've realized the closer we get there's a lot of nuance around this kind of consumption based scale so very big deal in the transition that we we get our messaging together on what is this thing a gigajoule per year it's a unit of, of energy and we're going to give you uh, basically an estimate, a rating for each house. Now you see a, a really key element of the new rating is at the bottom of the scale there. And that's the reference point that will be on every scale. It, we're calling it a typical new house. In fact, this reference point is generated for every house that's rated. So uh, there's not a single reference point. It's a, a dynamic reference point based on the actual house that's being rated. And what that reference point is, is if you built this house that you're rating, to meet the building code, the national building code energy requirements, so the insulation levels and the, the efficiency of the mechanical systems, this is the rating you would get for this house. So the house we have here is 143 gigajoules per year. Uh, it's probably uh, an older home, maybe not really old, this is not a terrible house by any stretch, but not a new home. And uh, if you built this house to code, it would rate around 100 gigajoules, 103 gigajoules. So, um, you know, this compared to um, the current scale, which I'll try to get up on the bottom of the screen there, which is, oops, I might have gone too far. This, this is happening half to me. I'll see if I can jump back. Sorry, folks. The current scale, of course, is 0 to 100 scale, and uh, there's going to be a, a shift here necessary because, uh, you know, we're basically moving in the other. Good is uh, switched around now to getting going down the scale. You want to get closer to 0 with the new scale, whereas you want to get closer to 100 with the current scale. So for places like the city of Vancouver, um, we're, we're working closely with them on transition strategies and other municipalities around BC. 
for how to switch if, if someone in a regulatory or bylaw scenario, a policy scenario, is, is using the current system, what can they use? Uh, how can they transition to this uh, to the new system, the Gigi Premier system? So I'll say a couple words on that. This is the very quick uh, presentation, folks. We've been doing 90-minute presentations, and I think I'm already more than halfway through my allotted time here uh, today, so we can get to Chris. So um, I'm going to the next slide now. Let's see how I do here. Um, I did mention that really the timing of the um, transition and, and some of the details of it really depends on what's happening in, in each province. So in BC, we have been in a lot of contact over the last 12 months, uh, and we'll continue to do that with Chris Higgins and others to make sure that uh, everything that they need to make the switch uh, works. Now, uh, there are some um, items on timing that we've basically been encouraged to really try to get things transitioned in BC to the updated system before the end of this calendar year. So that's great for us. We're happy to chase uh, 2015 for British Columbia, and that's what we're doing. Seems like the major players and the utilities and others are, are on side with that. So um, field trials are now underway. And so in British Columbia, we're working with Fortis and BC Hydro. Uh, they have contracted, uh, they've contracted out some work to give us some feedback on the new software and the new data collection procedures and look through the, all the new documentation uh, just to let us know whether every, everything seems to be in place. And we hope to wrap those by this summer uh, and then be ready for uh, provinces and territories to begin transitioning. So one key element of the transition is that there are new exams, qualification exams, for anybody who delivers the rating system. And so in BC, um, uh, I can't remember off the top of my head actually the number of energy advisors that are currently delivering files, but we would hope that between uh, this summer when the exams become available and uh, you know the late fall, let's say early winter, uh, we could get a sufficient capacity to have taken the new exams and passed the new exams. Um, one uh, nice thing that's happened recently on these exams is that, well, here's the, the next bullet explains that the first exam to launch actually will probably be this month. And this is called the foundation level exam. And this is a, a prerequisite test that anybody who's an energy advisor or a quality assurance specialist must pass this exam. Uh, this exam is, is a general building science and sort of professional uh, skills uh, multiple choice exam that is taken in third party test centers, which is a new idea for these Energuide rating system exams, uh, really went to an arm's length third party testing system that will be launching in May when we launch this foundation level exam, launching across the country. And uh, what's happening is Enercan is able to offer a price reduction uh, because it's just the first time we've used this testing system. So. Anybody who's an EA who's submitted a file since January 2012 uh, is eligible to apply for and receive this 50% reduction in fee. So just an effort to recognize that in an added cost, we're, we're going to require that uh, current energy advisors have to undertake. But we've had very positive feedback, and this was a very strong recommendation from the uh, national committee work that went on that we need to raise the bar in terms of the qualifying and qualification that happens to uh, be a professional in this field. So. So the foundation level exam will be out, we hope, by the end of this month, uh, which means that people could begin taking this exam. And we've we've passed out the uh, the uh, competency profile, the learning objective list for that uh, exam a couple of months ago. So people will be able to prepare and hopefully write and pass that first exam. The rest of the exams, that would be an energy advisor exam, QA specialist exam, and service organization manager exam, should be ready. Um, or I'm popping through, <laughs> pop forward on my slides again, should be ready in July. So the entire new exam strategy or, or, or um, regime would be ready this July, at, at which point we could begin getting people qualified in British Columbia. Um, so we're looking at, I would say, by December 2015 is when we'd hope to have the province transition. This, there are a few things uh, that we, this is going to be based upon, and really not the least of which is just whether it works for partners. Chris Higgins has told us on a separate call that uh, this calendar year would work well for the city of Vancouver if we can make the transition, because they predict other changes and things they're going to have to go through in 2016. And so, I mean, Chris can speak to this, but if I, I hope I'm characterizing his words correctly. But uh, it would work certainly for the city uh, to go ahead and make this transition um, before the end of the calendar year so that uh, they wouldn't be distracted by the ERS transition come 2016 when they have other updates to undertake. So what does it mean to transition? Just to be very clear, this means that after the date, say we chose December 1st, 2015, any evaluation performed and any label or materials provided after that date would be using the updated ERS procedures and the updated version of the software, HOT 2000 software. 
and all the consumer materials. So there would be no evaluations taking place that would produce a label with a 0 to 100 on it after the chosen date of transition. So uh, that's, that's a very important point. However, people could continue to use uh, the, the version of HOT 2000 that is currently in market. Uh, they could produce the 0 to 100 rating and uh, use it as a regulatory benchmark going forward. So there's some more detail on exactly how this could work, but essentially if a municipality really wanted to hold on to its current Energuide 80 in its, uh, in its uh, regulation or its bylaw, it could do so, uh, but if it wanted to have labels put, it on, put on homes, they would, the energy advisor would have to kind of do a dual model. So they would model the house in the current software, get the 0 to 100 score, and then open that same file in the updated version of the software to get the new gigajoule per year label. And we think it's very doable. The software has been designed so that files can be opened from the last version in the new version, and we hope that that will be a fairly seamless uh, process if there's a municipality or a program that wants to, to do that for a while. We would hope to move all programs and municipalities along to the new label before too long. So that's just a, a transition strategy that can be used. Um, and just to note that there, with the new rating system, there will be a, a 0 to 100 scale figure called the Energy Efficiency Indicator that will be generated but will no longer be the actual Energuide rating. So the new rating will be gigajoules per year, but there's a figure using a very similar calculation that will have a pretty good relationship to today's 0 to 100 figure. And we can talk with partners and parties about how to use that energy efficiency indicator uh, as a transition tool moving from today's Energuide rating system to the new system that we'll roll out this year. Uh, just a, a little graphic that comes from the back page of the new ERS homeowner information sheet. This is the basic house report. It's a little description for um, the user, the homeowner, of that this is a new rating system. So this will be after we do the switch, but it kind of uh, helps people understand there's been a transition. Um, it would give the rating in gigajoules per year, indicating that the smaller the number, the better. But say under the previous rating system, your house would have rated approximately, approximately being a key word, 79 on a scale of 0 to 100. The larger the number, the better. So this, this energy efficiency indicator would be that 79. It's not the new rating, but it's a, a relationship to the old rating that we hope people can use. So um, I don't think, uh, Karen and Tom Pierre, that I had necessarily been allotted any uh, question time. Um, uh, maybe you're saying, oh, sorry, I'm just looking over at the chat box that maybe there is a chance uh, for a question or two, but I've gone probably over my time. So Karen, I'll leave it to you guys. Um, but what I will say is there's my email address here at Enercan. Uh, there are a few key folks here uh, who work in various uh, areas like a, you know, data sharing agreements and uh, account management um, with partners and certainly in the Energy Star for New Homes program, which is picking up speed in BC. Just come through me if you want to connect with myself or any of those kind of other people um, on various subjects related to whatever your energy efficiency work is in housing in BC, and I can help connect you to folks here at Intercan. That's it for me.